Well, hey everyone, welcome to the second episode of Q&A Sunday. Doesn't look like there's going to be any shortage of content for this series because the questions are rolling in fast and furious. This is going to be fun. A lot of good questions been coming in. Before I get started, I have a question for you guys, a question for the snowmobilers out there. I've always had dirt bikes and quads all my life. I've never had a snow machine, but till now, because it's a necessity for us to get on and off the mountain. When I got the machine, the reservoir of the two-cycle oil was full. I know at some point I'm going to have to buy some snowmobile oil. So I called the previous owner and I asked him what oil he had in there. Was it synthetic or petroleum? And he didn't remember. He didn't know. Um, this was his first machine too. He had bought it off of that rich guy that I said in my other video and he just used it to ice fish the pond by where he lived and he decided he's going to get a quad and that's how I bought it off of him. So he doesn't really know any more about it than I do. So I was always told that it's not good to mix synthetic oils with the petroleum oil etc. So I have no idea what type of oil is in it, and I don't want to get the wrong thing. So I'd like to pick your brain on that for all the snowmobilers out there. Let me know what would you do, okay? If you didn't know what the oil was and you're going to have to buy oil, um, or is it okay to just go ahead and buy oil and just mix it and then go with that oil from there forward? So I'd appreciate your input on that subject. Thanks a lot. Okay, question number one. How come I don't just put a plow on the ranger or use the plow truck that I bought and plow the road to the cabin? Well, there's a number of reasons for that. Uh, the main reason is we live on a snowmobile trail here and I would make an awful lot of enemies if I plowed a mile and a half of snowmobile trail I don't want to do that. Um, also, when I was dreaming about this type of lifestyle when I was a kid, reading books about guys that lived in the woods, you know, they might have gone in and out to their cabin with a snow machine or a dog team. There was a lot of adventure, and that's what I dreamed about. Um, so if I plow this, drive right to the cabin all winter long, I'm taking the adventure aspect right out of the whole thing. And, you know, there's a little bit of inconvenience, of course, where we have to go in and out with the snow machine or the ranger, especially if I just want to run down to the post office to send off a bill or something. But, you know, it is what it is. And sometimes just going to the post office ends up being a half of a day of adventure. And... I really like it. It makes the days exciting. I didn't read books and stories about someone who drove home from work, pressed a button on the garage door opener, drove into a heated garage, went inside, watched a big screen TV, and then in the morning eating breakfast and pressed the remote car starter and off I go again to repeat the process day in and day out. Now that kind of lifestyle is just great in itself. Of course it is, but it's not what I dreamed about and it's not what brought me here. So I like the adventure. I certainly do. Yeah. Plus, we live up on a mountain and I don't really want to plow that much of this road coming uphill. It would be a lot of wear and tear on the truck. The plow truck is keeping the other property open, which is about two and a quarter miles away where we keep our vehicles. And uh, so far, so good with everything. Yep, it's been a good winter so far. Now, how come I put sheetrock in the cabins and I'm not just going with wood walls? Okay, I love wood walls, as you can see here. I put pine walls in my very first cabin. I put pine walls in my second cabin. I had pine walls at the homestead, which you've seen plenty of times. They look beautiful right up until you take a picture off the wall or you move some other item like a deer head or whatever. And then there's a big bleached out spot behind it. Yeah. 
from now on any pine on the wall is going to be wainscoting down below drywall on the top because i am done with those pale spots on the wall yeah i had a bear rug on the wall for a while and i took it down he had this big pale spot of a bear on the wall I'm not doing that anymore <laughs> A lot of folks are asking, are we going to have a garden up here and chickens and everything like we had at the homestead? Absolutely. But uh, like I said, we bit off a lot that we've been chewing on, tried to get ready for winter. We got enough stun and just kind of take a break from everything. We're going to pick back up in the spring. People are asking, are we going to have a workshop? Yeah. So I'll tell you, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We've already started prepping a garden area here. Every time that I cut wood and I raked up stuff, raked up leaves, we've been dumping it in one spot, and we're going to let that compost, and we're going to have a little bit of a garden. The problem is right where we are, we're very heavily forested. I've got to take down some monstrous old pines to give us some light in here. So whether or not we're going to have a garden this coming year, I don't know. Um, but in the future, we will. Whether it's up here on the mountain or over on the 10-acre parcel, but of course we will be gardening. I miss it. I miss having chickens. We're going to do all that and probably even get some meat rabbits in the future. But we don't want to overwhelm ourselves and try to do too much too fast because then you have chaos. I don't need any chaos in my life. Now ever since I started showing these comfy rocking chairs in my videos, lots of people writing and asking if I made them. I did not make these. I bought these from the Amish over there in New York State, but I did some searching online and I did find them online and I'll put the information in the description below. So one more question, I'll wrap it up. People are asking if I'm going to build a workshop or a garage or a shed up here on the mountain. Absolutely. What we were planning on doing was having a garage over there on the 10 acre parcel where our vehicles are parked. We were hoping to have it in before the winter. Didn't even get started on that, but that's the way it goes. Sometime this year here in 2018, we'll have a garage over there have a workshop over there might even put a little apartment in it not really sure but we are going to build something down there and I'm adding more acreage to the cabin property here and I want to have a little workshop up here as well yep so we take it one day at a time little at a time baby stepping our way through it and baby steps always get us where we want to be yep so that's it for now folks um i'm gonna try and pump these out on every sunday but because of our transportation situation up here on the mountain we can't always get to town um we can't upload uh up here through the cellular service we have to drive to town to upload all the videos and it's a 28 mile round trip and if it's snowing and blowing up here on the mountain, we don't always get down when we want to be. So it's tough to live on a schedule. But we will try to get these out on every Sunday. So that's it for now. If you have any questions, put them down below. And we'll address them one video at a time. So all the best to you folks, and God bless. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did and you'd like to see more of The Cabin Life, please click the subscribe button so that you can follow along with future updates. All the best to you and God bless.